There have been several enhancements and new features to improve 3D views in Chief Architect X15. Let's begin with more realistic looking grass. A new procedural grass tool is available to create a simulated 3D grass located in the terrain menu. Different than grass on the terrain perimeter, that is an image-based texture, the 3D grass looks much more realistic. There are controls for density, height, width, and curve ranges, color, and a mow height that will trim the grass using these parameters to achieve more natural looking grass in your scenes. For this example, I use varying colors for mow strips. For physically based rendering, the sky model has been improved and includes several new controls. As I enable the sky model, you will see it looks much more crisp. There is an option in the camera settings for an artificial terrain that will extend the terrain to the horizon. Once the terrain is extended, your scene will look more grounded and less like it's suspended or floating. While you can move the sun in the Adjust Sunlight dialog, there are new tools to move the sun and now the moon in 3D. They will work in the other render views as well. Let's begin with the sun tool. As you click and drag your mouse, the sun will follow. As you can see, the shadow moves across the house. To move the sun to your cursor's location, hold down the control or command key and left click. The sun will be exactly positioned. As I move the sun around and near the horizon, you will begin to see the stars that have been added. Let's take a look at the new moon tool now that the scene is dark. Using the control or command key, I'll click and position the moon. Like the sun, you can move the moon around with your mouse. To change the moon's shape, you need to move the sun, the same as it occurs in nature. As the sun is located, the moon's shape will change. To adjust the settings, in the backdrop panel are these controls. For stars, there are intensity and density settings. As these are adjusted, the scene will update in the background. Notice as the intensity is increased, and then also the change in star density. With the moon, there are controls for the luminance. As it changes, you will see the moon fade or increase. The moon intensity controls the amount of light it contributes to the scene. There are also controls for the direction and radius for both the moon and the sun. With these new settings, you should be able to improve your renders and have fun visualizing with these adjustments. For physically based render ray trace views, we have added a denoise feature to remove the speckles or noise you see in reflective objects like glass and steel. The denoise can happen during the sampling process or when the sampling is complete for the scene. The setting can be enabled in the rendering technique options, which you can adjust in your camera defaults. The denoise tool is also available from the 3D menu and can be added to your toolbar. This is a quick way to improve your rendering in 3D walkthroughs. For sun shadows, there is a soften option in the rendering technique options for the physically based render camera. With the soft sun shadows enabled, the hard line from the sun shadow is replaced with a more natural looking shadow line. Focal blur can be incorporated into 3D views with a depth of field setting. In perspective views, this can be enabled in the camera settings with control for the F-spot blur value and for the focal distance. The focal distance can also be adjusted in the plan view. Using the depth of field, similar to photography, can assist you to focus on specific elements of your rendering. You can adjust the opacity of glass in non-ray trace views. In the materials definition, is a setting where you can define the percentage of the transparency. This makes it easy in standard render views to better see items like glass walls. Depth queuing is available in elevation views to fog or shade areas that are a specified distance from the camera. Like the 3D cross-section slider, the depth queue has a slider to set the distance away from the camera, the fog opacity, and color. The depth slider has a start and end value that provides a range for the depth cue to fade. 
The slider range can be adjusted for the camera in plan view. Depth queuing can be helpful for remodeling projects or to focus on certain elements in your design. A hidden line feature for elevations can be used to differentiate below grade surfaces. On the new below grade panel, you can define the settings to override below grade surfaces for a color, style, and line weight. You can use the terrain perimeter or set an absolute height. At the bottom of the panel is a list of all the surfaces that will be affected in the view. There are several great new features in Chief Architect X15, and you can expect to see it this spring. And remember, all new software purchases include support and software assurance. So, if you're not currently a customer, get started today with Chief Architect. <laughs>